Christ said keep the commandments. But the non-denomination Christian church tells us that the commandments are below Christ. That we don't have to keep the commandments of God anymore. Teach. So how do those two match? How do we, how is Christ above the law and we don't have to keep it anymore if we believe in him? But Christ out of his own mouth said keep the commandments. Teach. We're not taught that we got to keep God's laws, are we? God's law? Right, right. What? I'm still taught that, yes. You're, you're taught that you have to? That you're supposed to keep God's law, yes. Okay, give me some examples of some of those laws. Uh, Ten Commandments, I, I don't know. Ten Commandments? Yeah, there you okay, go. Okay, fair enough. My sister here, I, I didn't catch your name. Sister Ruth? Yes. Okay. What, are, are you taught, what, what's your religious background? So non-denomination Christian? All right, how, how about the, is this your husband? Yeah. Okay, and what's your religious background? Same. Same? Yeah. All right, and the non-denomination... Oh, let me tell you, when we were younger, it was Baptist. Okay, okay. You cast away the Baptist, now you're non-denomination, right? All right, in the non-denomination Christian church, what are we taught about God's laws? The laws. That, that Christ came and changed the law. Okay. So, my sister, what, what denomination are you from? Non-denomination. Okay. Were you taught the same thing or something different? Yes, yeah, same. That Christ came and changed the laws? Yes. Okay, because you had, you, had, you had said that we yeah. still got to keep them. I heard what you said, yeah. Okay, so what, which, which one were you taught? Christ is above the law. Christ is above the law. So, if we're in Christ, we don't have to what? follow the previous law. Is that what you're saying? What I'm trying to make sure I got a clear understanding on what's being taught. Okay. I hear what you're saying. I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying, so I have oh. to analyze what you said. Okay, fair enough. So let's go to Christ's words himself, right? Let's go to, you got Matthew 5 and 17? Yes, Check this out. <clears throat> the book of Matthew, chapter 5 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law. So Christ said, think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. Or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. I've come to fulfill. Now, in the Christian church, what are we taught about Christ fulfilling the law? You, you already said it. That, and you said it too, that Christ is... Above the law, he's fulfilled the law. Right, so the things in the Old Testament, do we still got to do them or we don't do them anymore? Uh, fulfill, still fulfill the law. So, he is the law. So like, how do you unpack that word fulfill? Like, what, okay. what, is it, what does it mean? Uh, there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. Okay. How about Sister Ruth? Yes, sir. Unfo um, for Christ to fulfill the law would mean what? To fulfill all our needs and take care of us. So that we don't have to keep them anymore. That's what we're taught in the Christian church. But is there a scripture that says we don't have to keep God's commandments? It's, it's not in the Bible. Right. All right. So the Bible, give me Isaiah 28 and 8. 28 and 9. Yes, sir. All right. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9. Read what you got. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 9. Now, we already went to another scripture saying if a man speak, he's got to speak as the oracles of God. Meaning I have to give you a scripture to justify what I'm saying. Otherwise, I'm lying. Read. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Who is God going to give knowledge of this book? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Nehemiah, get your Bible. Read on. Them that are weaned from the milk uh -huh. and drawn from the breast. Read on. For precept must be upon precept. The Bible says precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Uh -huh. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. So here a little, there a little. We must have scripture to prove what we're saying. That's, right. That's what we must have. So give me Acts chapter 3 verse 18. So we're going to show what the Bible says about what fulfill means. All right? Because I can give you the opinion that I was taught. The perspective that I was taught as a child. Fulfill means Christ is above the law. We don't got to keep the laws anymore. Read on. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 18. Uh -huh. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth 
of all his prophets uh -huh. that Christ should suffer. That Christ should suffer was shown by the prophets of old. He have so fulfilled them. You see that? The Bible says what it meant for Christ to fulfill the law is there were things written in the law and in the prophets that Christ came to fulfill. But the Bible does not say that fulfill means you don't have to keep God's laws anymore. And I'll give you an example. Because we believe that the Bible is the unfallible word of God, right? That there's no contradictions in the Bible, right? Okay, give me Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Somebody came up to Christ and asked him, what do we got to do to get everlasting life? Sister Ruth, you want everlasting life? You guess? I ain't guessing. I want everlasting life. What? You got it? Oh, you got it already. So somebody could pull out a gun right now and shoot you, and, you, and what's going to happen? Okay. Now what about when you resurrect for the eternal judgment? Because we all got to resurrect and be judged, right? What are we going to be judged by? All the good works. Okay. Okay. All right. Now how about you? What would you say? Uh, my salvation in Christ. The fact that I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, okay, all right. Let's see what Christ says. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19, and verse 16. Because we believe that Christ has the answer, right? Yes? Yes? I ain't catch your name, bro. Derek? Yeah. All right, Derek, Ruth, and Shar. All right, read them. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So the good things, Sister Ruth said, I'm going to be judged by my good works in Christ. Am I right? So Christ is going to tell us the good works that you must have. Read on. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. Uh -huh. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life. If you want everlasting life. Keep the commandments. So Christ said keep the commandments. Christ said keep the commandments. But the non-denomination Christian church tells us that the commandments are below Christ. That we don't have to keep the commandments of God anymore. Teach. So how do those two match? How do we, how is Christ above the law and we don't have to keep it anymore if we believe in him? But Christ out of his own mouth said keep the commandments. Teach. How do we make those two things jive together? The law changed. He, you still keep it, but it just changed when, when Christ came, when he laid on the cross for us. What changed? What changed about the law? Don't keep it. We still supposed to keep it. I'm not saying that. But if I show you laws that you're not keeping, how would you justify it? You have to show me before I can. I don't, okay. I can't answer that. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hold, hold on. Hold on real quick. Hold on. Real, give me Mark chapter 10. Give me Mark chapter 10. This is your husband. Yes. Right. Okay. All right. Now, I don't want to make this too personal. Right. But I'm going to speak to a married man and a married woman about marriage in general. Yes. Is that fair enough? So... In a marriage or a relationship, if a husband and wife get into an argument, right? They're on bad terms with each other right now. And then in that same night, things are still a little tense. But the husband wants to get some. What typically happens as a response from the woman to the man when he's trying to get some? What does what, she typically say? If they had an argument or whatever, say that again. Argument between husband and wife. Husband wants to get some relations from his wife. What's a typical response from a woman in the midst of her being upset with her husband? It depends on the woman. Just give me I, I can't speak for that. You can't um, speak for that? Talking about if I, you know, because I don't know what nobody else is saying. Right, I just want somebody to give me, an honest, give me an honest answer, Sister Sharp. Not tonight. Not tonight. Thank you. That's all I'm looking for. Somebody to keep it 100. Sister Ruth, is, is, that, is that honest? Is that fair? Not tonight. I got a headache tonight. This, that, and the third. Okay, okay. Give me Mark chapter 10. Give me verse 16. Mark chapter 10, verse 16. The book of Mark chapter 10 and verse 16. Uh, uh, jump down to verse... Yeah, uh, verse 17. Verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, uh -huh. there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? So what do I got to do to get everlasting life? And Jesus said unto him, What callest thou me good? There is none good but one, uh -huh. that is God. Read. Thou knowest the commandments. Thou knowest the what? Commandments. Do not commit adultery. Can we commit adultery? No. Sister Ruth? No. Brother Derek? Read. Do not kill. Can we kill? No. no. Read. 
Do not steal. Can we steal? Nope. Read. Yeah, we do. But we do, but there's a penalty for sin. In the New Testament, it says, the, give me, hold that, give me Romans 6 and 23. I'm going to try to speed it up. I know we ain't got too much time. But I want to make sure we make this point. I want to make sure we make the point about what it means to keep God's commandments to get everlasting life. Read what you get. The book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 23. Uh -huh. For the wages of sin is death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. What is sin? Show them that real quick, 1 John 3 and 4. Because the non-denomination Christian church that I was raised in didn't give me a clear biblical definition of what sin is. But if I ask, I'm sorry. I, I don't think none of them do yet. But, but the Bible does. Yes, which further proves the point that we're making. Christianity, regardless of the denomination, does not teach the Bible. Right. They teach man's tradition. Right. They teach paganism. And what we want our people to do is come back to your true heritage as an Israelite, according to the Bible, and do what the Bible says. Right. Read what you got. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Whosoever commit a sin, transgress them also the law. You see that, my sister? See how plain that is? Now, is, if I, before I read that, if I asked you, can we sin? What would you say? No, we cannot sin. But we, we're, we're, right, we're born in sin. Sin is all around us. Yeah. But did God give us a license to commit sin now? No. Did Christ die so that we can continue sinning? No. no. Ho hold that. Well, finish that up and give me Sirach 15 and 20. Whosoever commit a sin, transgress of also the law. Uh -huh. For sin is the transgression of the law. The Bible says the definition of sin is a transgression of the law. Right. So when I ask a Christian, someone that says they believe and follow Christ, can we break God's commandments? The answer should be absolutely not. Because we cannot sin, and sin is the breaking of the law. Give me Sirach 15 and 20. Sirach chapter 15 and verse 20. Uh -huh. He have committed no man to do wickedly, uh -huh. neither have he given any man license to sin. Did God give us license to now break his laws? No. But Christianity has given us license to break God's laws. By doing what? By saying that, oh, Christ is above the law. So if you just believe on Christ, you don't got to keep the law no more. Or you're keeping the law in your heart. You don't got to keep the law uh, with your clothes no more. You don't got to keep the law with your diet no more. You don't got to keep the law for the days that God told you to celebrate anymore. That's what Christianity has taught us. Go back to Mark chapter 10. I think we were at verse 18 now. 10 and verse 18. All right, because I'm going to reel it back in. All right, because we talked about sin. Sin is the breaking of the law. Christ just said, you got to keep the law. And he's given some examples. Don't commit adultery. Don't murder. Don't steal. Uh, defraud not. Do what? Defraud not. Who ever heard of that law? Defraud not. Hmm. Hmm. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 19. Give me Leviticus chapter 19. I think I want verse 13. And then we're going to come back to the New Testament. Line upon line, precept upon precept, to have a clear understanding on what does the Bible actually say. Read what you got. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 13. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor. The Bible says thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor. If you read on to verse 17, it's going to tell you that your neighbor is your brother of your own people. You read on. Neither rob him. Uh -huh. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until, until the morning. Read it again. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor. Right? That's what we're talking about. And Christ said that we can't defraud if we want everlasting life, right? Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Christ said that we can't defraud. But back to the scenario that we were talking about, if a woman is mad at her man, her husband, because we're speaking about husband and wife here, if it's boyfriend and girlfriend, baby, daddy, baby, mama, that's fornication, right? right? But we're talking about husband and wife. Wife says, not tonight, right? <laughs> Let's see what Christ says in the scripture. First Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 3. Yep. Let the husband render to the wife due benevolence. Due benevolence is sex. Right. Right. Let the husband render what? Do benevolent sex. And likewise, also the wife. Unto the husband. The wife has to render sex unto the husband. Right. Well, jump up to verse 2 so that we understand why. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. To avoid sexual sins, do what? Let every man 
have his own wife uh -huh. and let every woman have her own husband. So anything outside of marriage, husband and wife, official marriage, y'all got your marriage paperwork? All praises. Anything outside of that is fornication, right. which is a sin. Right. And according to the New Testament, Romans 6 and 23, the wages of that sin, along with all other sins, is what? Death. That's right. So if you're in the midst of fornication, you got to stop it if you want everlasting life. Read on. The wife have not power over her own body, but the husband. And, keep on, keep reading. and likewise, also, the husband have not power over his own body. So Sister Ruth doesn't have power over her own body. Brother Derek has power over her body. Right. Brother Derek does not have power over his own body. Sister Ruth has power over his body. When it comes to what? Sex. Right. Sex. Now let's see what the Bible calls it when a woman decides not to give sex to her husband. Read on. Defy ye not. Oh. <laughs> Make it plain, officer. Teach. Did we just hear what the Bible says about a wife that says what? A wife that says not tonight? A wife that says not tonight cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. Teach. That's what the Bible says. But what Christian church has taught you that law? That's right there in the New Testament. In the book of Mark, chapter 10, verse 17 and 18. It's been right there. Further proving our point, my sister. The Christian church, regardless of the denomination, does not teach the Bible. Right. The only place you can get the true understanding of the Bible, if you want to be a real Christian and follow Christ, is to do what he did. Right. And the Bible says that Christ did no sin. Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, That's right. did no sin. So if we're to follow Christ, that means we are to no longer do what? Sin. And Brother Derek, what is sin? It's a lot. It's a lot. No, no. What's the one we talking about? Oh, not Not tonight is a sin. Right, right, right. Not tonight, sister, is a sin. Right, right. Not tonight, brother, is a sin. Well, I got you. I'm going to answer your question. Let me finish the scripture. Defy ye not. Go tell it to Derek so you don't forget. One the other, except it be with consent for a time. It got to be with consent. We got to agree. Me and my wife got to agree. We're not going to have sex tonight. We're going to commit ourselves to prayer. We're going to do a fast from tonight to tomorrow. We're not going to have sex. But if I want it tomorrow night, after the sun goes down, she can't say not tonight. Because I got power over that. Right? And if I don't want it, and she wants it, I can't say not tonight. Because she got power over that too. Read on. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again. That Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Incontinency. Now, what's your question, Sister Ruth? Because I want to make sure we answer it before we got to get out of here because they about to kick us out. How about if, 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 I'm not saying it for anybody, just, just out of context, um, if a man was to cheat on his wife and that's why they arguing that night and he asked for it, would she give it to a man saying not tonight? Is that sin? If a husband has cheated on his wife? Mm -hmm. now, and so, the argument starts from that and it escalates and he wants to have sex with her and she says not tonight. Is that a sin? Now, sister, I understand your question. All right? I understand your question. All right? I'm going to answer it quickly, yes, and we're going to have to head out. All right? So, go, go back to 1 Corinthians 7, verse 10. It's not a verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. Uh -huh. And until I'm married, I commend, yet not I, excuse me, yet not I, but the Lord. So, Paul is saying, what I'm about to tell you is not my opinion. It's coming from the Lord. Read. Let not the wife depart. From her husband. Don't depart from your husband. Remember, God did not give us a license to commit sin. But if your husband just committed adultery, it's possible he may have an STD. Right? It's possible he may have something that's going to kill you. Right? Now, God is going to give some wisdom on how to handle the situation. Read. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. All right? So, if you need to separate from your husband for a period of time because of an extreme circumstance like that, that is okay, but you want to take counsel first. The Bible says, let counsel go before every enterprise. Read. Or be reconciled to her husband. What must she do? Or be reconciled to her husband. She has to be reconciled to her husband. So your husband committing a sin is not a license for now you to start sinning. 
You must be reconciled to him. You must forgive him for his sins. And he must repent from his sins as well. That's what the Bible says. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is you.